Personal Injury Court. This is a matter of Taylor versus Martin. It's my understanding from looking at the documents that you all filed with the court that, Mr. Taylor, you filed this lawsuit for injuries that you sustained when Ms. Martin struck you with her car when you were trying to cross the street. Uh, you are seeking $5,000 in medical costs, $15,000 in lost wages, and $50,000 for pain and suffering for a total recovery of $70,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Martin, your uh, position in this case is that you didn't see him and you hit him. You didn't really have a choice, but it's not your fault. Is that yes. correct? Yes, Your Honor. Now, you know what's odd about this case is that there's a 911 tape in the file. I think we ought to hear it now. 911, what's the other emergency? Yes, we just have a man just run up butt naked. I mean, he's next. Okay, we'll get him out there. They don't want to leave. They got no choice. They'll run him over. I'm just standing about 50 yards away, buddy. They don't, the people don't want to move enough. He's butt naked. I got him. Now, Mr. Taylor, you were that butt naked guy, right? Yes, Your Honor, I was. Okay, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Tell me how this thing happened. Your Honor, it's honestly a crazy story. I love the beach. I love the water. I love to unwind after a stressful work week. Okay, so on this day, you're trying to go to the beach. Yes, Your Honor. So what happened? I got to the beach. I was swimming. It was a beautiful day out. All of a sudden, a riptide came up, stuck me right under. My swimming trunks ripped right off. Okay. Okay, now things got interesting, right? Yeah. Okay. It was a full-blown panic. So then what do you do? Once I got out of the water, I stepped foot on that shore. I had one thing in mind, and that only thing was I need to get home. Now, how far away from home are you now that you're standing on the beach with the family assets Two blocks out? away. And, Ms. Martin, you remember this day that your car struck Mr. Taylor? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And, and what were you doing that day that uh, put you out on the road? Your Honor, I was going to choir practice. For 25 years, I've been going to choir practice. I know the road. Taking this same route? Every day, Your You Honor. know this Nothing. route like the back of your back hand? Back of my hand. Nothing different. So, Mr. Taylor, you are standing on the beach. You're trying to figure out, how do I get from point A to home butt naked? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> I'm a firefighter. I have to be held up to a certain standard. Yes, sir. I can't let people see me like that. So, the first thing that crossed my mind was, I have to get out of here fast. I was running, took the alleyway, Thank goodness there was a garbage can there. I looked inside that garbage can, and thank God that there was a paper plate. Yeah. A wise person once said that the mother of creativity is necessity. So this was necessary, right? This was necessary. In all seriousness, I, yes, was, I was scared. I just wanted to get home. So I proceeded to take that plate, and I put it over my private areas. OK, and then what did you do? I ran. Now, Ms. Martin, you can understand that kind of panic trying to get home, right? I understand, when, Your Honor. When you're butt naked, right? I, underst I understand the urgency. But he just running and dashing in the middle of the street, he didn't look left, he didn't look right. You know, Ms. Martin, that's a good point. You know, Mr. Taylor, tell me this. You get the plate, you start running, now what happens? I'm running, butt naked. People should see me, right? Okay. It's a two-lane spot. Yes, sir. The first lane, I have my hand up. The rest of the traffic slows down. That's when I proceed to go into and, the front. And, and you're this way with the plate on the spot. OK. Yes, Your Honor. All right, good deal. She came speeding. I didn't even have time to see her. I couldn't hurdle over not or nothing. Bam! That hit me, set me 20 feet in the air. That's when I came crashing down, landed right on my tailbone. Now, I broke my coccyx. Now, Miss Martin, you see that this young man was hurt. Yes, Your Honor. I imagine some little piece of your heart goes out to him. Yes, Your Honor. Again, it's, it's not my fault. I didn't have enough time to react. Because she was so speeding. I so was not speeding. Mr. Taylor, you submitted a, a diagram. Yes, right? Your Honor. Could you come over here to the monitor and, and explain how this happened? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, now, what, probably obvious, but what's you? This man holding the plate is me, Your Honor. Uh, describe what happens. Back here would be where the beach is, Your Honor. Okay. This green area down here would be where freedom is. That is my house down there. Okay. Now, the only thing stopping me from getting to my destination was this road. So this is a little bit like a human game of Frogger, right? <laughs> 
if you want to put it that way. Okay, and you were the frog. Yes, the, you are. The butt naked frog. Unfortunately. That's right. Okay, then let's take a peek at it. This is me. I wave my hand. Car stops. Next car. Boom. 20 feet in the air. And it uh, knocked, knocked the plate right it off the screen, the right? So See, Your Honor, he just bumped I'm my most front of vulnerable. Miss Martin, that red car is you, right? That's correct, Your and, Honor. And Mr. Taylor, that blue car is the one that saw you and stopped. Yes, Your Honor, she was God sent. Okay, and, and Miss Martin, you didn't, you didn't I, see I, him until you hit him. I did not. I, I didn't have time to react. He came out like a bat out of hell from well, nowhere. What were you looking at? He had things jingling and tingling, and I was like, I, I was surprised. Well, no you shot. saw something, right? I mean, I mean, I was going to choir practice. I'm a church fearing woman. And this man, he just, I was just in shock. Almost, now, I almost uh, had a heart attack. So you didn't see him until you hit him, right? Until I, it was too late to do anything. Now, he said you were going too fast. Do you I, know how fast you were going? I was obeying the speed limit. It was 25 miles an hour. And you know that. And I know that. And you're sure of I that. never had a speed. I've been driving for 40 years. A clean record, Your Honor. What's never. always the case is somebody's wrong. You may return to the podium. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Mr. Taylor, tell me specifically what your injuries were. I uh, busted my coccyx, which for people who don't know, is my tailbone. And, and how has that affected you? Let's just start off by saying, three months out of work, um, excruciating pain, medicine, it doesn't help, loss of, of wages, and then the biggest part for me was not being able to physically, you know, pick up my child, play with my daughter. Well, this, this and, takes me back. And that, I mean, I, and that was, I cherish that most in the world. This, this takes me back. Yes, I, 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 I hurt my coccyx when I was uh, playing football in college. So, so it, you understand. It hurt pain. standing, yeah. sneezing. Yes. I got hit and it was, it kind of shut my legs down. It was so bad. Yes. Uh, but it wasn't over that day. Is that how it's been for you? constant pain since she struck me with her vehicle it's been so miserable that i have to sit on this it's like a donut you have to put your butt listen in it. that that's it, an it, old friend of mine yeah, believe me I, ha I even have to take it to the bathroom now can you imagine taking this to the bath oh i don't have to imagine i did yeah so you understand yes sir miserable how has this affected you in terms of how you feel your head your mind. Well, I'm going to be honest, and that is the depression. It really started to sink in. Um, it's affected me every aspect of my life. Why isn't this your fault? Your car hit. Well, first of all, Your Honor, he was not in the crosswalk. And, you know, Ms. Martin, that's a good point. You know, Mr. He... Taylor, tell me this. I see on this diagram that you prepared, this, this animation, uh, you're not in the crosswalk. Now, yes, Your Honor. Uh, you could have gone down to the crosswalk, right? I just wanted to get home as, fa as quickly as possible. Hey, you know, lawyers call the crosswalk the zone of safety. That's right. Right? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, was there anything that prevented you from going into the crosswalk, even running with a plate over your uh, jewels? I was very embarrassed, and I just wanted to get home as quick as possible. And Miss Martin, your car struck him. I mean, that's undisputed, right? What were you looking at? I was listening to my Christian music. Jesus takes the wheel, and he did because, you know. Well, I, I know Jesus had your ears. Who had your eyes? Your Honor, I, I had my eyes glued to the road. He, as I said, it was on impact. He just jumped out like a deer out of nowhere. He should have been in a crosswalk. Miss Martin, you know what I want you to do for me? I want you to go over to Plasma Screen and we're gonna restart this animation. I want you to tell me what's happening here from your perspective. Now, we're gonna slowly roll it. Now, tell me how this happened. Well, I was driving. I wasn't speeding. But when he came out, it was just too late. So I had you, no time to react. You but didn't know he was there until I, his bear behind hit your car. Till I saw things. Yes, Your Honor. She's been driving this road 20 years, like she said. She knows. I know the, wor the you, road back you, and front. You should for be driving five miles years. Miles for 25 the years. Y'all doing you it again. Been, you shouldn't have been I, in the middle of the street. I wish I was that talented to hear both of you. Mr. Taylor. Yes, Your Honor. Now, you keep saying that she should have watched out. She should have watched out. Shouldn't you have been looking out for her, too? Yes, Your Honor, but at that and, time... And that crosswalk is just 10 feet away now. It's right there. You were completely right, right Your there. Honor. Different conversation if you're in the crosswalk, right? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Martin, you may go back to your podium. 
Mr. Taylor, I want to understand the extent of your injuries from a medical perspective. So this court is going to call Dr. Samantha Brown Parks. Sheriff Matt, could you please escort the doctor in? Yes, sir. Hello, doctor. Hi, Judge. For the record, would you state your name? Uh, Dr. Samantha Brown Parks. Doctor, I need to understand the extent and nature of this tailbone injury. Could you explain that to me? Absolutely. So when the defendant hit Mr. Taylor, the force of the impact drove him up into the air, and when he fell into the ground, all of that force was felt at the bottom of his spine and his tailbone, or his coccyx. And, and where exactly is the coccyx? So the coccyx is this triangular bony portion at the bottom of the spine, right below the sacrum. We need this as the center point for walking, for sitting, for standing, for bowel movements, for sexual function. So by cracking it, you can have pain with all of those normal activities that we take for granted. How, how do you treat it? So unfortunately, coccidinia, or pain of the coccyx, unless it is broken all the way off, we don't normally do surgery. It's left to repair on its own um, over a long period of time. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. You may be excused. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Mr. Taylor, I see on the list that you have brought a witness. Yes, Your Honor. And I'd like to hear from your witness. Yes, Your Honor. Sir, step up to the podium, please. For the record, tell me your name. My name is Jeremiah Graves. And Mr. Graves, what's your role in all this? My role is I saw everything happen, Your Honor. Well, how, how were you in a position to see it? Uh, I'm a hot dog vendor on the street that the accident occurred. Okay, so the uh, diagram that had a little umbrella. Yes, sir, that's me. Okay, so you're standing there. What do you see? Um, it's just a, a, a normal day on the job, serving hot dogs right off the beach. And um, I really noticed a really fast red car coming. And I thought that was strange because being so close to the beach, people usually don't drive very fast, a lot of kids. Is that the red car you're talking about that yes, was going yes, fast? Yes, Your Honor, that is the red car. Did you get a clear look at the driver? Absolutely, yes, sir. And what did you see? I saw this woman right here. And what was she doing? It was strange because when she got close enough for me to see her face, I noticed that she was locked eyes with me. She's On looking at you. I was yeah. not looking at him, Your Honor. Well, Miss Martin, you understand that if you were looking at him, there's no way you could see Mr. Taylor, right? Correct. If you were looking at him. But you, you say she was looking at you. Absolutely. And then what Clear happened? Day. So I look to my right to see maybe if anyone's walking, tell him, you know, get out of the way. When I see Mr. Taylor running naked, other cars stopped for him, but she did not. Mr. Graves, do you think in the way this happened that that blue car blocked her view at least for a while? Uh, that's possible, sir, but like I said, she was looking at me for at least two to three seconds directly in the eyes while she was driving, so. So, Mr. Graves, thank you. You may return to your seat. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Martin, if this is not your fault, why do you think he filed this case? Because he's a freeloading scammer. Your, your Honor. Now, that, now that's strong. Why do you think that? That he's because, a freeloading Honor, scammer? This is not his first lawsuit. I want to present this to the court. I have evidence he had filed two years ago. He had filed um, cases in a court. He claimed he got hit by a car. You've got a, so you've got this a is folder a scamming in your hand. freeloader, Your Honor. Your Honor. He has done Sheriff this before. Matt, you he probably that intended to rip off his. Yes, go ahead. Your Honor. Mr. Taylor. Uh, you, you've been uh, suing folks in the past? I was having some bad luck, Your Honor. Those cases bad luck are winning, that's what. Those is. cases are irrelevant. They shouldn't even be brought up. Miss Martin, I want to give you a legal lesson. I allowed you to put in these prior lawsuits to present these to me, but the law really doesn't allow me to consider these because it does not matter on this day. While interesting, it does not tend on my decision, and thus, it, it just is not really relevant. It's not really relevant. So I'm not gonna take it into consideration. But I do appreciate you supplying it to me. Mr. Taylor, Ms. Martin, I've heard everything I need to hear, and I'm ready to make my decision. <laughs> In every personal injury case, there are three elements. Mr. Taylor, you've got to prove that Ms. Martin was wrong and that her wrong caused your injuries. Here, you weren't using the crosswalk. You had an opportunity to use the crosswalk. And Ms. Martin, you were driving distracted. It's difficult for me when you're not able to explain what you were looking at if you weren't looking at the road. 
So, Mr. Taylor, you came into this court suing for $5,000 for your medical costs, $15,000 for your lost wages, and $50,000 for pain and suffering for a total of $70,000. The law requires that I compare your responsibility. That's comparative negligence. You were wrong, but you were also wrong. Here, I find that you are 25% responsible, I find in your favor, in the amount of $52,500 and against Ms. Martin. That is my final decision. Wow. And this court is adjourned. <laughs> Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Leonard Lundy has to say. The defendant lost this case because she violated one of the major rules of the road. She failed to keep her eyes on the road ahead. She may have been distracted by the crosswalk streaker, but it did not excuse her obligation to focus on the road ahead and drive at a safe speed to stop her car in a timely fashion. Distracted driving is dangerous driving. Thank you, Doctor. is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Platt and Reese versus Hopper. Mr. Platt, Ms. Reese, it's my understanding that you all received these injuries when Mr. Hopper's car hit yours and you were on the side of the road. You're asking this court to award you $90,000 for past medical expenses, $35,000 for future medical expenses, and $125,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $250,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Hopper, it's, it's your position that you were being chased. Your car went out of control. This was not your fault. And although you hit them, you're not responsible for their injuries, right? That's correct, Your Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Y'all, tell me how we got here. Well, Your Honor, this is my fiance, and we have been happily engaged for about five months now. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we met about three years ago. Uh, mutual friends invited us to a lake house, and we just bonded over being outside and our love of the water and basically just haven't been apart ever since. We work a lot, so we promised each other that we would make time for each other every Saturday and get ice cream because that was our first date and it means something to us. It's important. So on this day, were you all going to get ice cream, coming from ice cream? Where were you going? No, Your Honor, we had just finished uh, eating our ice cream. So you all are driving home? Yeah, and just ran into this humongous, crazy scene. There's just a line of cars just parked along the side of the road. There were also just a ton of police vehicles, you know, like with their lights on flashing. We get flagged down by an officer and he says, no, you guys need to get off the road now because there's a high speed chase going on. Okay. And of course, yeah. Yeah. Th that doesn't happen in our town. By this time, you all knew what were, that something was wrong. Yes. Well, yes. Mr. Hopper, before this accident happened, what was going on for you that day? Well, Your Honor, I'm a social worker. I help rehabilitate women who have been battered and abused. Very and, important uh, work. Very I, important I, work. I, I was, thank you. <laughs> Your Honor, I was leaving. I was on my way home. And uh, unfortunately, we're here today because of some lies that were told. And the unfortunate situation happened, and we're here. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so Mr. Platt, you were driving this car, right? <sighs> Yes, Your Honor. So how do you get hit? If you pull off the side of the road, how do you get hit? By that point, I thought to myself, well, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I, I figure, okay, I'm gonna pull out my phone and just, you know, videotape it. Just as I start filming, they lay out the spike strips and then I see this car barreling down the road like a bat out of hell. And Ow. it, it it's approaching the spike strip, and at this point, it's clear, okay, he's going way too fast. Okay. He swerves a little bit in order to avoid running over the spike strips, but he goes right over it, and he's trying to correct himself, and he just goes right into us. It, 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 your Honor, I had nowhere else to go. Do you, do you remember this? It, it, it was like a Yes, Your Honor, I had nowhere else to go. I, it's a small road. I go down this road every single day going home from work. It's downhill. It's a rural residential area. And yeah. So you're familiar with this road? I'm absolutely familiar with this road. Okay. And it's downhill. Uh, you're right. I did hit a spike strip, but I didn't know the spike strip was there. Were you oh. speeding? 
No, Your Honor. It, it's you, you, are, you are very much going over the that. speed limit. So you're, you're coming down the road. Yes, sir. It's downhill. You're, you're not speeding. No, right? sir. And at some point, you realize there's a spike strip there. Your Honor, I realized there was a spike strip there all at once the moment I hit it and heard a I didn't know there was a spike strip there until after it had happened. Okay. I don't know what I had hit. I just saw something in the road at the same time that I heard a loud You, 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 you pow, hit something. You hit something and you didn't immediately And I hit a car. Break. And it's not my fault that there was a spike strip I, I, in the I, middle of the road, Your Honor. I don't see Thank how you, these sir. lies affect Mr. Platt, you said happened. that you were videotaping this. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, so you submitted a video to this court. Yes, Your Honor. I, I want to see it so you can tell me what happened. Let's let's yes. take a peek at it. It's here on the plasma. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my God! Oh no! Oh no! What the? F Why would they put spikes? What the? F no. You okay, babe? I don't know. My head uh, hit on something. I don't know what. Now, Miss Reese, what are you thinking while this is going on? Honestly, Your Honor, that video only captures a small fraction of how frightened we were in that moment. It, it hit us so hard that my head went through the window. And the only thing worse than that moment was the moment before because it hit his side of the car. I didn't think I was going to have a fiance in a minute. So you thought you all were going to die. I really did. I really did. So, Mr. Hopper, you saw that video, right? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, you That's you driving that car, right? Your Honor, that, sure that was my car before it was totaled because of the spike strips. You but, can but you're in the car, right? Yes, sir. I was driving the car home. Who are you running from? Your Honor, I wasn't running from anybody. I okay. was just trying to then get Then why home. were the police chasing you? I, I hope y'all will let me ask questions, right? <laughs> well, why are the cops behind you? Well, Your Honor, that's... <laughs> That's an interesting story. Mm. Um, well, tell it to me. Mm. Okay. Well, Please do. Mm. I've been in a uh, off, on and off again relationship with my with my current girlfriend who who's sitting here today, and we got in a little bit of an argument, and she got really upset. It's happened before in the past, and part of my self improvement, I've, yeah. I, I'm trying to leave those situations not and not let them escalate. How did the police get involved? That's well, what I'm trying to figure the police. out. She has a way of trying to get my attention by calling the police when I won't stick her. Yeah, I'd say so. It's calling the police to okay. get your attention. It's okay, babe. She calls them to try to get my attention. Um, it, it's her way of showing love, I guess. I can't really explain it. I, I just know I love her. So, the, very so, happy so, so you're result. chased by the police on this day because your girlfriend called the police on you. She said I was driving drunk, Your Honor. She wanted me to stay and engage and argue with her, and I wasn't going to do it. So she calls the police. She tells them I'm drunk, I'm a danger to myself, and I'm a danger to the public, which I was not. Yes, you and were. Blood, I submitted blood and did an alcohol test there. You weren't drunk that day? Absolutely not. I don't drink. Why run from the police then? As I said, Your Honor, I, I didn't feel like I was running. I was doing about 40 miles an hour going down a small residential road that I go down every day. I didn't think that I was speeding. Like I said, I was just going home. Let's Two take another look at this video. Because yeah, let's it, do that. It, please stand. Let's please do that. Stand. Now, Mr. Hopper, I want to slow this down, and you can tell me what's going through your mind as, okay. as you're in your car. Yes, Your so Honor. Let's, let's go slow. Now, so, walk me through this. What's so this is the you? road that I go down every day going home from work. I live about a quarter mile from here. You see it's downhill. Uh, see, I didn't even see that spike strip right there. All I saw was in the corner of my eye, I saw a police car with the lights off to the side. Okay. I, I just kind of... I just jerked a little bit. Are then, you out of control at this point? Yes, Your Honor. I'm, I'm clearly out of control. So you know point. you're about to hit something. I just heard a big pow. I grabbed the wheel. My arm hit the steering wheel and the dash really hard, and it broke my elbow, and that's right when I got the concussion as well. So you were pretty frightened, too? Well, yeah, Your Honor, I was scared to death. I mean, I had police in my rearview mirror, and then I had police off to the side, and something in the road I'd never seen one of those really before. I thought spike on. strips were only in the movies. Y'all realize he was hurt too, right? Yeah. I'd be willing to trade his injuries with mine. So, so, so do you feel badly about these injuries? 
No. Your Honor, they put this on the local news, and it's ruined my reputation in the community. Oh, these folks you were terribly hurt. You reputation. understand that, right? Wow, gee whiz. Your Honor, it's not my fault that they stopped right there and the police put them so close to a high-speed chase, such a dangerous situation. On a you small see, they're right, it looks like they're in the lane, Your but Honor. But are you going to be that hard on your girlfriend for getting this started? Your Honor, our relationship... Please, please do. Please do. I'm not very proud of what happened. I'm not proud of our past, but I'm, I'm in love with her. She's my person. And we've had, we've had our issues. We've had our ups and downs, sure. And this is the worst. But Your Honor, I don't feel bad for them for what they've done to me. I was a victim, Your Honor. I know, I know about your elbow, okay? And you told me about the concussion. Tell me about, Mr. Platt, first of all, your injuries. Well, as soon as he hit the car, the driver's side window just completely smashed. And it's very difficult for me to, to raise my left arm, but essentially, I just reactively put my arm in front of my face he's to shield myself, and I got massive laceration. Well, hold on, what did you say, sir? I was saying it looks like he's raising his arm fine to me. Okay, do, do you think they're faking this? I don't. I okay, don't then let me That's hear about their injuries. I, I spent time on yours. Direct your comments to me. Y'all making me work today. Now, Mr. Platt, what's uh, that brace on your neck for? This is because I got severe whiplash from the crash. And Miss Reese, you, you've got a, a halo on. What's that I all do, about? I do, I do. When I hit the side of the car in the collision, my head went through the window and it actually fractured my C3 vertebrae, which in a nutshell means I have a broken neck right now. And this halo so is It's amazing actually, you weren't paralyzed. I know, I, uh, this halo is, is screwed into my skull. And I have to... You gotta sleep with that I have thing? to sleep like this, and I have to sleep sitting up. I can't... I haven't had a good night's sleep in months. I have to help her... He has to clean. help me do everything. I have to help her get into bed. I... I this sounds like God. a nightmare. We had to put off our wedding for six months because, excuse me, I don't want to have a circus contraption in all my wedding videos. That, that would be weird. That and I now have to get plastic surgery because of the cuts on my head. Well, I see that you're asking for $35,000 for future medicals. Is that for the plastic surgery? Yes, that will go towards plastic surgery and then anything else that we could possibly do to help look the way I did before the crash. So you see, Mr. Hopper, regardless of whose fault it is, you see these folks were hurt pretty bad. All I can say is, like the video shows, Don't, had there not been a spike strip in the middle of the road, this wouldn't the be The spike strip, you this is all because hard. of you. Stop, Miss Stop. Reese, we gotta have an agreement here, okay? Miss Parker, would you step up to the podium? I wanna hear from you. you. You seem to be the only person without some kind of apparatus on them. Did you make a call to the police? Um, I did, Your Honor. T tell me what that's all about. Well, uh, Your Honor, I had actually shown up to bring him some lunch at work, and I saw him talking to this girl, laughing, flirting, and... I wasn't flirting, Your Honor. But you were laughing, and you guys... Am I not allowed to laugh? You're allowed to laugh, but you work with so many women, and we already have these... Y'all can do this at home. God. So what happened? How, how did you get this whole thing started? He left in a hurry, very angry, very upset, and I, I'm the type of person who likes to just get done with the argument, find a solution, and move forward. And he just wants to just run away, and I just, I don't understand. Like, so what did you do? So I wanted to scare him straight. So scare I, straight. I, I called the police. You called this definitely scared, scared someone straight. I didn't mean, I didn't mean straight. that to happen. What did you tell the police to encourage them to pull him over? The only thing that I thought that they would actually act on, which is that he was drunk. You just committed a crime. Yeah. You call the police and tell them. That's right. You call the police and tell them something that's not true so that they can arrest someone because no. he walked away from you. You cannot do that. It wasn't you to arrest. You cannot do that. That's a waste of police resources. It's a danger to your fiance. It's, it's bad all the way around. This breakup to make up thing that y'all got going on, it is really unhealthy. And regardless of how I decide today, I'm gonna order you all to couples counseling and, that would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. and anger management. Yes, we do. And see, you're, you're showing that I'm right. I'm gonna order yes. you to anger management and 250 hours of community service. Oh my God. Now please take a seat, ma'am. Thank you.
I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. <laughs> In every personal injury case, the plaintiffs, that is you, Mr. Platt, you, Ms. Reese, you have to prove that the defendant's wrong caused your injuries. Here, you all were on the side of the road, according to police instruction, finishing your ice cream, and Mr. Hopper's car slammed into you and caused severe injuries. Through your videos and other evidence, you have shown that there were decisions he could have made very differently that would have changed this result. You, Mr. Hopper, you got caught up in something that you didn't even know what was happening. Mm -hmm. That is, all of a sudden, you're leaving an argument with your girlfriend, and all of a sudden, the police are behind you. You don't know what's going on. Then you hit a spike strip and slam into these folks' car, and now you're here in court. That's right. Mr. Platt, Ms. Reese, the evidence in this case has shown that you all have proven that Mr. Hopper was wrong. He could have made a number of choices. Absolutely. Because of his wrong, he slammed into your car and caused you all serious, what? serious injuries. And that is why oh, I am going to award you everything you've asked for. Oh, my God. I am awarding you past medicals of $90,000, future medicals of $35,000, and every bit of pain and suffering of $125,000 for a total award of $250,000. That is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Richard Harris has to say. The plaintiff's video really helped their case. I think there are two important lessons here. First, if a police officer turns on the lights and sirens and directs you to pull over, then do it. And second, thank goodness the plaintiffs were still wearing their seat belts when the impact occurred. Yes, their injuries were severe, but if they were not belted, they could have been ejected and the results could have been deadly. Thank <laughs> you.